before I get into this next video, uh, something I just want to address real quick. Um, I do these videos to help people put the information out there, you know, and I don't mind answering questions to a degree. But if you're in my inbox on Instagram, on Facebook, at saying, hey man, I love your videos. Hey, what's the part number for the Willwood brakes? Or hey, do I need a bracket for those? Then clearly you don't like my videos because I literally gave you the sauce. Um, so that's kind of annoying because it's like, I, I put everything out there, you know? And then even let's say in these last round of videos, the links didn't work. In the video, I show the box with the part number. So, that's why I do these videos, so that the information is out there for you, readily available. Also, house cleaning tip number two. Um, a lot of my business comes from YouTube, um, a lot of social media stuff. I get a lot of customers that way, and they can find me. Um, I'm not going to ask, answer a question, how can you get in touch with me? I'm not going to, because every single video moved since last month for business inquiries, and I put my email address, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. And then at the end of every, every video, since the beginning, since I started, I've put my logo, my Instagram logo, the Instagram logo, Facebook, and then at OTG Mechanic. Um, if you go to my about page on YouTube for business inquiries, there's my email address. So, you know, it's not that I'm lazy or I wanna, I don't want your business. It's just like, dude, it's the internet. My YouTube page is at OTG Mechanic. So why not just hop on Instagram and see, hey, maybe he has an Instagram page or I don't use Instagram. Let me see in his description. Maybe there's an email address I can email. There's a thousand ways to, to, to do this. And it's just kind of annoying, honestly, just when people are just like, oh, I love your work. How can I get in touch with you? Like, what do you mean, bro? It's, it's right there, clear as day. So that's it. Y'all enjoy the video, man. Happy, happy Monday, y'all. We back in the shop today. Um, hope y'all enjoyed all the Denali content. Um, pretty much good to go. Um, drove to work today. Uh, been putting some miles on her, driving her everywhere. And so far, so good. Tune's pretty good. Um, so, that project's pretty much done. Um, next thing I'm gonna do on that truck is put, I gotta get some sound in there, man. Ever since I sold my two door, I've been, Feeling the itch, I need some bass. So I got these uh, audio pipe amps that came out of, actually a customer gave these to me. He actually gave me two 1800s and one four channel 2000. Uh, so I'm gonna put these two in the truck um, and I'm gonna get probably four eights under the seat or two big eights under the seat. I was gonna put these two Pioneer 10s and I may just toss those in there for now, just so I have something and just turn the amp way down. Um, but eventually I'm either gonna do four eights, four decently sized eights or four or two big eights uh, that can handle that much power under the seat. Um, and that's about it. And then we'll start, you know, saving up for some wheels and tires on it. But anyway, back to the Impala and B-Body content because I know that's why you're here. That's what y'all been looking for. That's what y'all been waiting for. So we got this thing here. This is a 96 DCM. Beautiful, beautiful car. Um, I actually met this customer at Caffeine and Octane, which is the uh, show that we have in uh, out here in Atlanta. First Sunday of every month. It used to be at Perimeter Mall. Now they have it at Town Center Mall. And it just brings out just about everybody. Um, you see everything from monster trucks to low riders to you know, ex civics with the 10 inch pipe exhaust, 10 foot exhaust and all kinds of crazy stuff. So it's a good, good show. A um, little bit of something for everybody. Uh, so I met this guy, Leo, there uh, a couple months back. Uh, he was broken down, heater hose, the little plastic heater thing was broken. So, you know, I gave him my number like, hey, if you ever need anything, let me know. And he's actually become a really good customer. I've done quite a bit of work to this car. Uh, I'll go over what I've done on it. So first thing he brought it to me for was a transmission. So I put a transmission in this car. I put a transmission in this car. I also put a Dakota Digital in this car. It's got a Dakota Digital. But the problem he's having today, I've actually had this car for like a week because uh, I don't know where he went. He dropped it off. Um, I did a tune up on it and then I never heard from him again. But I remember there was one issue I had to look at, which was there's no heat. 
Uh, so I already did a thermostat on it. I flushed the heater core three times. Uh, there's a little bit of dirt coming out, but not as much that would normally come out, you know, with a clogged heater core. Normally you just see just brown stuff just coming out. This one was pretty clean. Um, so I've run into this problem before, and so I'm pretty sure out there, if you got an Impala or something like that, B-Body, you've also run into this problem. So I'm gonna show you what to check uh, before you do anything, before you flush the heater core, before you suspect the thermostat, before you do anything at all, this should be the first thing you check if your Impala is not getting heat. I'll show you. So I think I mentioned this either in another video or I had made the video and never posted it. Uh, your HVAC controls on your on, on these B-bodies are controlled three different ways. So this is your fan control, as you know. This is electric. This is your uh, hot coal selector. Um, this is manually controlled. There's actually a cable connected to this. And then your selector for um, heat, air, AC, the defrost, all that stuff, this is vacuum controlled. Uh, so the one we're gonna focus on here is a, is a, the manual cable that's connected to this. So it's a manual cable that runs, runs behind the dash and then it turns a little flap inside the HVAC box um, that switches it from the heater core side to the EVAP core side for AC. So right now we see, we'll turn it to cold. And you know, you can't really tell, there's no resistance on it. You really wouldn't be able to tell. So what you do, you drop your glove box on here. I'll put it back how it was. So glove box is closed. Open your glove box. And if you look, there's a little tab right here. Push that down, fall like that. And what you wanna look for is this piece right here. And I we can already see what the problem is. Watch this. Watch that little wheel right here. That's what we're looking at. So, oh man, I'm trying to get the light set up. Okay, come on, stay still. See that? See that turning? It's not turning anything. It's just sitting there. That's our problem. That wheel is supposed to go right here on this little... It's really hard to get my hand in there. Hold on, let me get something I can point. All right. Let's see if we can... Little... Okay. Okay. Damn it. Tools of the trade, people. Tools of the trade. Get this thing to just sit here. Well, it's just being difficult. Oh, come on. Okay. All right. So, oh, try you. I'll just use this. So that's what, that's that piece right there. Um, let's see. This piece right here. That sits in there, and there's a little screw you have to put on it. It's a whole thing. Um, what happens is it slides out and uh, it doesn't turn the heat on. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna pull this dash apart. Uh, the easiest way to get to it is um, by having the dash apart. Uh, taking the lower dash off, pulling the radio out. Um, that way you can attack it from both sides. Um, that's normally the way I fix it. So let's get it fixed. Okay, so I changed my mind. Um, because I didn't put this dash together, I'm going to try to avoid having to take it apart. So I'm going to try to fix it through here. So there's a little screw where the uh, socket is on. That's what holds the uh, that mechanism on there. And what happens is, I guess it just eventually wears itself through. So what we're going to do, we're going to pull that screw out, put a bigger washer on it, put the piece back on, screw it back in. And the washer should hold it in place. So, um, I think once we do that, we should have heat. Actually, I know we'll have heat because I fixed this. I fixed this several times, so I figured I'd make a video on it. Um, you know, and if you want to check out the interior of this car, it's pretty nice. I actually just had this done on mine. I really like this. And then I just sent my da top dash off to get to match this. So, shout out, shout out, Adrian. All right, so we got the screw out. Just regular inverted hex that would work on this. 
and then I got a washer. I don't know what size this is. I got a whole tray of them or whatever. So basically we're just going to use that to um, just make the make it a little bit bigger. Boom. So not overkill, but just a little bit bigger. That's all we need right there. So we'll put the uh, we'll put the I don't know what it's called the mechanism back onto the flap, and then we'll screw this in, and uh, we can view it and confirm that it's turned it from hot to cold. We'll fire it up, let it get up to temp. I'll put the temp gun on the uh, vent so we can make sure it's hot, and uh, this one will be fixed. So awesome! All right, so. There we go. All right, I think that'll work. All right, so let's see if we can get this. Hold on. It's kind of tight in there to have the camera. So what I'm doing, basically, I'm just putting the mechanism back onto the little selector up there. Uh, what I'm going to do, because I don't think it's perfectly at the same angle that this is at, I'm going to set it on there and I'm going to turn this to try to to try to line it up onto the the little mech, uh, the little flat part, I'm gonna need both hands for this. So give me a second. All right. So as you can see, it's on there, and see how it's turning it. Yeah, it's turning it. So what we're gonna do now? We're gonna put the screw back in with the washer. And that goes, you'll see the hole right there. Um, you'll see the hole where it goes, right there on the, the side, right there. Put the screw with the washer in, and that should hold it in place. And um, then we should have heat. So what I had to do, the orientation's a little weird, so you're going to have to spin it. Oh, Jesus Christ, it's light. Uh, that's how it should be. Um... So you have to spin it upwards, well, clockwise a little bit to get the hole to line up with the screw and then just start your screw. And then we'll, um, we'll screw it in the rest of the way. And I'm using, a, what is this? A, it's a five millimeter. What is this? this is a four millimeter screw uh, socket. I couldn't find the right size inverted um inverted hex i know i have some but i don't use them often so they get lost in the drawer so four millimeter seems to be working just fine so let me get this thing screwed in uh we'll get it fired up and um i'll show you guys that it is actuating the the flat from hot to cold too uh we can actually see that through the glove box all right screws in so now you can see it's moving it so we should have heat now. I'm gonna fire it up and uh, we will let it get up to temp and then we'll get the temperature gun and we'll see what the heat is at. I should have did it before, but let's see where we're at. 110 degrees, 112 degrees coming out the, the vent. It's going up. 116, 117. So it's getting hotter. So it looks like we got heat. Looks like we got heat. Oh yeah, it's just steady getting hotter. So I'll call that fixed. Yeah, I definitely should have did it before, but when I uh, when I went to um, to pull this car in, I was like, let me uh, let me try to fix this thing and see what's going on with this heat. And once I saw what the problem was, um, because when I had got it in the first time, I just flushed the heater core and stuff already, just to you know kind of eliminate that. Um, but then I was like, oh, I forgot my, even my own personal rule. Check that first. So then when I checked it, I was like, yep, there's the problem. So I figured you guys are probably tired of the Denali content. Pr Trust me, I'm tired of making it because that means when I'm making Denali content, it means I was working on it. So now I can just drive it and enjoy it. Um, so trust me, I was tired of it too. So um, I wanted to at least give y'all some kind of B-body stuff. And I figured right now with it being winter, pretty sure somebody else is having this problem and uh, has done all the steps originally that I did as far or what people normally tell them to do oh flush the heater core change your thermostat um, 
some people even go as far as changing the heater core and still have the same problem when 10 minute fix without even, and actually I did it this time, this is the first time I've done it without having to take the dash apart. I normally pull all the radio out and all the lower dash and all that. So it actually can be done by just literally just undoing that one clip on the, uh, the glove box and reaching in and doing it. So, um, you know, save yourself a whole lot of time and headache. But yeah, it's definitely showing you like you can see, but yeah, she's up to about 130 now. So yeah, yeah, and it kind of matches the temp on the uh, the dash there too. So yeah, it feels pretty good. We got heat. We got heat. All right, y'all. So pretty quick video. Um, I hope you, um, I hope you guys. Ah, uh, let me get out of here. Get some light. I hope you guys are um, having a good holiday season. Um, and also I hope you guys are enjoying the shorter vi videos. I've been trying to either split them up or just make them no more than 20 minutes max so this will be a quick one and then i've been scheduling my uploads too so like i'm gonna go edit this video now and schedule it to release you know tomorrow automatically so i don't forget and then anything else i do throughout the day will film and why is it still doing that popping it was doing that a second ago and one of the spark club wires had came off now it's doing it again but it's not as consistent it was doing it all the time we'll investigate but uh until the next one see y'all